I have never considered myself clearly in any field. And that, I think, is both a problem and an advantage. Um, uh, it's also that the bad story about, you know, maybe you're just a dilettante as a result. Um, and so, you know, I've done my best to do, do good work in each of these areas and look deeply into it. But, but always in that, and the problem is the interesting questions are always between fields. Um, and you can never do enough. You can never get it all. And I think that's one of the real challenges we, 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 we experience. And having a group of diverse people talk about things actually helps you figure this out. I mean, I'd never heard of this, this guy you, you just mentioned. Um, and yet I've taught most of my career levels of selection stories. Um, spent, you know, having studied with Lewinton, with Gould, with, uh, with Wilson, and even, you know, even Hamilton for a year. Um, uh, I had all this stuff in my head. It was all going on, and, and we've been arguing about it all along. And yet, to find out that there's somebody that somebody at least thinks is terrific that I didn't know about is a real surprise to me. Um, uh, so I, I think that's one of the real advantages of this. Um, I should say that, uh, as I mentioned before, I, I, I sort of have wandered back and forth between these fields, never being in any one real field. And I've mostly just followed questions all of my career. Um, and the questions lead you elsewhere. They lead you out of your field oftentimes. And, you, and it's easy to get in trouble when you do that. Uh, and yet I think it's the most exciting and the most, uh, for me, I, I feel like it's almost a noble quest to sort of put yourself out there and get kicked around a little bit. Uh, because you learn in the end. You, you figure out where you're wrong and you can make new turns. I think that's great. Um, I also mentioned that, you know, I, one of the people that really influenced me very, very indirectly was a physicist. You know, I, I, although I started in physics, I didn't want to go there. But Erwin Schrodinger's book, What is Life, um, I think really changed the field of biology uh, across a discipline, even though he was not talking about things that were really in that discipline. And I think you know, those of us in evolutionary biology uh, actually haven't learned some of the lessons that he talked about there, he, or at least the hints he provided. Um, and one of the things I was hoping to get out of this, this, this conference, interestingly enough, was uh, especially a debate with Dan and with, um, uh, with, with Richard about evolution. Uh, because I've come to change my thinking about evolution, and of course with, with Jerry, uh, because of the Schrodinger argument about the, the, the problem of entropy production. Uh, and it's really changed my thinking about biology. And it's changed my thinking about the way evolutionary biology works. And I think one of the interesting things about evolution, Dan made the point that, that Darwin has contributed a lot in many, many ways to, to the philosoph philosophical world. Uh, but in many ways, um, this is a really serious question about what kind of causality is it? Um, how do we think about that nature of causality? And how do we link it with other kinds of physical causality? And I think it's very close to one of the reasons that I've sort of shifted recent discussions towards very, very simple questions about the origins of life uh, is because I think we, we still don't have a clue what we're talking about. And interestingly enough, I think it's relevant to questions about mind and how the brain works. And the fact is that I don't think we're going to get at those questions until we become this, we're willing to follow the interdisciplinary route work between not just the sciences, but between the science and, and philosophy as well. And even though there's a lot of disconnect, and I, I still feel there's a lot of disconnect, and we certainly found it here, um, I, I want to just make a little side comment uh, about the criminal justice system, which I, I love your comments about this. My wife worked for 10 years uh, running a uh, what's called the prison for special offenders. These are people who are mentally ill and um, who were deemed so dangerous they couldn't be put in a hospital. Um, really, really extreme personalities. Just trying to get into their minds, trying to figure out what goes on is such a, a mind-opening experience. You know, it's, 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 it's almost psychedelic, you might say, that you know, they're so different, their minds are so different. Uh, really, I think this is also part of the neurosciences that we don't, we don't really have a sense of how big that difference is. Um, and, there's this whole thing called personality disorders. We don't really have good neuroscience for it. We, we're sort of getting at it, but it's because we don't really have a very good general theory about how brains work. And one of, one of my problems is that every time I begin to study one of these questions, I say, okay, and this is what David does too. Is, you know, what can I do physically? to answer the question. So interested early on about human beings and language, um, I realized that doing the language stuff was going to be really hard. Um, but maybe I could look at brains. You know, what's different about a human brain and a chimpanzee brain and a monkey brain? Uh, maybe that would tell me something about it. it. Leads me to other questions. Is that my time already? 
Oh, ouch. Okay, well, let me just, let me just end with one piece. Uh, and, and that is that this has been great. Uh, I can't say that my mind has been changed, but I'm worried about how general naturalism is. And my view of the problem is that naturalism was implicitly a negative statement, what we're not. Um, these other guys. And we quickly said we're not going to talk about those other guys, uh, but that makes naturalism almost negatively defined, and I was worried about that as a starting point. Uh, and this is why I think Massimo and Massimo says maybe we should be talking about more specific things, or conferences that sort of focus in on specific things uh, might have actually been a little more helpful. But it's a good start. <laughs>